The floral tributes are still growing in St. Petersburg. Though Russia's second city is trying to get back to normal, people here are understandably shaken. It's planted fear in people in one way or another. Today it's clear there are fewer people on the metro. I think it's a tragedy for the city, and not only for the city, but for Russia as a whole. Everyone is shocked. Just a few hours after the metro system restarted operations on Tuesday morning, an anonymous call brought emergency services back to shut down several stations again. This rapid emergency response at the site of Monday's attack shows that even though St. Petersburg is trying to get back to business as usual, this is still a city on edge. And this is the man now identified as the chief suspect. Born in Kyrgyzstan in 1995 with Russian citizenship too, Akbarjan Jalilov is believed to have blown himself up in the metro train. Speaking to reporters with his counterpart from Kyrgyzstan, the Russian foreign minister warned against linking the attack with a specific Russian foreign policy. Terrorism and terrorists don't have a nationality and it is unacceptable to try and find some sort of link to his upbringing or his religious beliefs. Terrorism is a crime against all of humanity and against all, without exception, world religions. The truth of this will be tested if and when any group claims responsibility. Until then, this security expert says certain things are safe to assume. Now the ideological narrative is yet uh, to be decided, but based on the fact that we know that one device went off, the other one uh, was prevented, it was seemed to be suggest that this was coordinated, multiple. Uh, that certainly bears the hallmarks of a transnational terrorist group. In Moscow, a church service was held for the 14 dead and 50 or so injured. This attack hasn't just shaken St. Petersburg, it's shaken all of Russia. And what it means for Russians and their security isn't fully known yet. Rory Challens, Al Jazeera, St. Petersburg.